So this video is going to be about uh, what I call my D table, and it's going to be about how I actually installed my PM74 and my BXP88s, two of them, and on my PM74 I actually wired it up to work like a PM42. So to kind of go through uh, what's on the table first, the basics. Basics, I have some wires bringing in my rail A, my rail B in my ground. They come in, run in, and have run along and connect up to a terminal block basically in the middle. Here, let me get my shadow so it's out of the way. Get a terminal block in the middle, and that's where I bring in my rail A and B. That's where I bring in my ground. And the only spot I connect this for track power is these two connect to the input to my PM74. And again, I have, this is how I programmed it. So I uh, switch 40, I set the C, which resets it. That's where I set the address. Uh, 7C sets, turns the power down uh, to be 3 amps, I believe, at the trip. And then 41... C changes it to uh, send out the messages over local net like it's a PM42. And then the 12C actually turns off the transponder uh, information. Uh, let me see for a minute. So there's kind of where I got the stuff in my cheat notes on it. And I did, uh, one thing that I did find interesting, or one thing that occurred is, I didn't actually set the 12C at first. And when I set it up to JMRI and started running running it, the catch is these got two guys here that are connected. And again, they're, this is where I bring in my rail A and rail B, it goes to here. It goes out here and here, and these guys go and they are basically the input to my BXP88. And this one here goes, runs across, goes to there. And again, my input to my BXP88. So what was happening is on these two cha uh, channels, basically local net here was uh, sending out transponder information for uh, each of the channels constantly because Basically, they were pulling power here. So I had to go in and disable transponding, which for this guy, I wanted it to work like the 41C, which basically, let's see there, at the very end, it basically what it means is, I don't know if the description is too good, but it works just like the, or my experience so far has been, it works just like a PM42, sent out information. However, the transponding stuff still sent stuff out, but I didn't have to do anything for the occupancy. It doesn't send anything out. So point, all I want this guy to do is report shorts. In fact, this is set up to do shorts, and I have on both of these guys, my BXP88s. One second, let's get the book for it. So both of my BXP88s, when I went to program them, take in mind there's not a lot of configuration you can do here. Oh, I shouldn't have put the book up yet. Yeah, okay. So here is the book in the sections. So again, 40C was 40C did a reset. There is the address. So this one's 34, and this one's 33. I'll show you something on that in a minute of what they are. Uh, 10T, 10T basically uh, disabled the power management because I want this guy to take care of the power management, not this guy. And this is a preference. I just didn't really care for uh, last time I hooked it up with the three BXPs here, the little clicking noise and stuff. Uh, I had trouble hearing, or I like the big relays making the noise when uh, there's a short. 
And so I didn't care for the way that was working as nicely. And what I also really wanted was the fact when a short is detected in any one of these eight, I wanted the whole, all eight of them to shut down where when it does the onboard short circuit protection, it only turns down that one channel. And I'll kind of show a little bit of why that is in a minute, but anyhow, 10T. 10T is disable power management and 11T is to disable the power management reporting to local net. So uh, I believe when I did all my testing, it looked like I was just getting transponder information out of here, out of these parts, and occupancy information out of those parts. Okay, and like I said on this guy, should get the book. I have set it up to work like uh, PM42, and basically, and this is the, the device I think is so neat. There's just so many different things you can do with it. Where this guy, it reduces wiring, makes it easier to hook up because you only have one common wire where each one of these have to have their own. So this has a value, has a neat spot. I have uh, potentially three of them on the, this layout, and then I have two others, so I have five total. But I kind of like these guys because I can hook up things and kind of make do different things with it. Right now, all I'm doing is what's in the DS1 section, and I'm hooking it up to work like a PM42. Okay. So, as I said, rail A, rail B, ground. They come in, run along here, come in, only go to one spot for the moment, and then for power stuff, power, the input power, to both of these is here. If I choose to do a third one, I will connect up to the third spot. And then from he these guys, um, clearly I have eight different sections coming in. And uh, let me back up a little bit. So I have done it so that on my, uh, and by the way, videos nine and 10, 10 especially shows the top of the train out how it works. But if you look, I've got A's next to uh, those three, those three, and those two. So when you come onto the table, there's a section. The outer part here, there's a section. When you leave the table, there's two sections. And all eight of those go back to this one connector here. And this portion here is the common side, brings everything together. And then you'll see that I've got some B's here going up the center in front of my yard, like uh, where the uh, all these switches bank here is. But there is... B1, B2, and then three, four, five, six, and seven. And that's here where I've got these guys. And technically, instead of eight, I've actually only got seven of them. But for the moment, I needed to combine my A, or this one and two together. That's why all the, I have the three jumper here. Typically, it would only be the... Looking at these the same way, there's the black, black, there's the set of red, set of red, and set of red. So if I look right here, those guys, that's where A1 comes in. And since it's directly underneath where this uh, terminal block is, I actually combined them together on the terminal block. So again, seven items come in here. I combined one so that I only needed six of these. And then here, these guys are basically, you can see C and D is the halves there. And if I go back to here, you'll see that C is the beginning. There's where it comes in. I've re, uh, done the top of the layout so that the entrance part, all the switches is one part, then two, three, four. So I can separate them or uh, I thought it was more efficient than what I had done originally. I didn't like what I did originally. And then here we've got the uh, uh, five, six, seven going across there. And then eight again as the switch is coming in. So those are the four Ds, I believe it was. And those are the Cs, vice versa. And typically those would have gone over to here but because to this guy. But since I've been having an issue with uh, my local net burning out, I decided to keep uh, one of them off the table till I've decided that it works good. And so by 
making only needing six here. That gave me the ability to do two here. So these are combined together. And uh, then I'm able to put all of them on here. So basically everything has a transponder. And I've just lost detail here with all the C's because they're basically all C's are together and all the D's are together and the 1B and 2B are together. So basically that gives me 16. Eight here and uh, the eight that go around are what I originally planned for because that's the main loop. What I combined was something like an engine yard, a car yard, and then when I go into my... Uh, uh, train yard, the ladder in front of it, I've combined them together to save spaces. Also, you'll notice relays here. So I have connected basically um, on my train table here, I have the 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, 7B. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I also connected all of my Ds together and that's six things, so six items. And basically I have taken the wires from here and then ran them into the relay port here that is connected to the normally closed. So basically without anything connected to this side, it lets electricity through. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Those first five are the three B, four, five, six, and seven B. One, two, three, four, five. And then the very last one is basically the D spot where the engine yard is so that I could cut it off. It's one of these guys that come over here, goes up to here, so that I could cut the power off to it so that if I have a bunch of engines sitting there, I can turn it off. And why did I want to be able to turn those guys off? It's because that's where I would probably park passenger cars. So let's see, I talked about the power coming in. Comes to this terminal block, only goes to one spot. Power going out, this works like a PM42. Provides power to these two guys. Can provide power to the third one if I get it. And I even hooked it up so that the second spot and the eighth spot, if I was to use my new, use another PM uh, uh, BXP, 88, I basically could take this three bracket off, so it's only a two bracket, connect a single wire to here, run it to the second point, the eighth spot stays blank, and then all eight of these would go over to here, unless I wanted to maybe take either, a, get another one of these if it works, and put here and maybe run, I don't need an eight, I probably, or a six, I'd probably need a four, because I would probably want to do uh, five, six, and seven to go through and be able to cut off the power to it. Or I could maybe take my common ground. And by the way, uh, since I have only, I made a comment, this guy here is the, uh, connects to all these, and these outer four go to here. If we look at my instructions of the, black wire, which is the common wire for uh, uh, the other side of the red things here. Bottom line step, you can see here that those three, and those are basically the B, C, and D. So right now I've got them all tied together because they would take a black wire and go up to here to be the common return. So let's see, um, and local net. So I got a new PC board for local net. The connectors point up. And this doesn't do the reversing that uh, um, I found the previous part I had purchased did. Um, I forget, I think it's video 19 talked about, uh, I found that um, the part, I didn't like the way it worked. It did something wrong and it inverted uh, pins one and six. So anyhow, point, it talks about it. So I got new PC boards for here, local net. I can plug in here and then take it over to my next table when I got it against it. Local net runs along back there, comes into here, runs out, goes around there, comes into the next part, and then goes to the last one. So local net's in there, and that's what I've had trouble with. So hopefully um, I have solved my problem with them burning out, and I've held off putting any uh, power in here yet. 
for any of the three because if I end up putting this other one here, I figure I would make a custom power cable that goes around, goes to all three of them because these take nine volts. And this just takes your standard uh, PS14. Uh, so I talked about how I'm using three terminal blocks to provide power to potentially three different bxp 88s I do that so that I can change my mind and hook them up if you look uh, differently than what I might have expected. In fact, if you look at what I had done in, I believe it's video 9 and 10, but video 9 shows the backside, and you'll see I had all three of these before I started developing the problem, and I've actually hooked it up differently than I did there. One thing is I've been spending some money keeping, uh, sending these back to Digitrax to get them fixed. So I kind of, that equals what I've been spending on uh, uh, mailing and repairing the parts at Digitrax. Uh, and right now I've got basically what I look at, it's $500. That's $100, those are $200 each. So each table is gonna be about $500 and all like uh, my uh, electronics for the track. So I'm trying to figure out how to protect that investment. And that might be with something like, and I forget the exact letter, I think it's the LRNP. Anyhow, something that will does electrical isolation for local net. And so relay boards here. So this is going to take some kind of microcontroller type uh, setup to basically, again, normally closed is what I connected them to. So I might move it once I have the ability to fl flip them on and off, but right now it takes no electricity, don't have to hook them up, and basically everything is connected. So, talked about how I'm using terminal blocks. Two, I wire up to there, and then when it comes time to hook in the electronics, I can change my mind and adjust stuff. I talked about how I'm using this as a PM74 configuration, and that's the uh, how I had gotten to it by uh, setting those uh, addresses or whatever, the uh, CVs, setting those CVs to accomplish the task. And I talked about how I replaced that guy to be a different type part uh, and how I use terminal blocks to connect everything up and then to give myself a lot of flexibility later. So still things that hopefully nothing will blow or I won't develop a, lo a local net problem for these guys. A uh, previous video talked about it, and um, I'm going to move on to my next tables. Uh, this, is, again, is table um, D, so I'm going to work on what I call table A, which is the other end of this, so I have basically three big ovals to go around in. And I talked about how I haven't connected up power yet, uh, just because no good reason yet. Uh, I was going to try to get everything hooked up and then kind of figure out the best way to manage all the different power connections. And uh, I think that was it. So again, uh, the uh, videos that go with this would be a uh, 9, which shows the bottom side of how I did it the first time, and then 10, which shows the top side and talks about double gaps and stuff and how the track actually is laid out how I came up with that configuration and how I can hook these up differently using terminal blocks and the jumpers and the wires to adjust how it works because there's a very good chance I might not ever put another part here but we'll see.